Did you ever used to take your pencils or screwdrivers and pretend you were Wolverine like this? Today we're talking about drivers, tools to build or take apart your RC craft. Now, whether that's a drone, a plane, a car, or anything else, having the right tool for the job means the difference between you being able to perform on race day quite literally many times. We're going to talk about some cheap options and some more expensive options and explain exactly why you might want to spend a little bit more on something like this. I'm gonna go from the cheapest to the most expensive. When you first start it off, everyone gets a cheap set of hobby drivers like this. These can be had for about $12 for a set of four drivers. This is just another flavor of that. And this is probably slightly cheaper feeling, hard plastic shell. So the cheapness kind of starts over here. The best is these MIP drivers, the hobby grade. They typically are used by RC car guys and man, these things are the best, but they are quite expensive. A lot of the things that you'll have with these cheaper options is that they will strip out your tiny screws. Typical drone and other RC hobbies, you use 1.5, 2.0 millimeter and 2.5 right here. I can't describe to you the level of frustration that happens when you strip one of these bolts and you can't get your drone out. So when you're taking apart a drone like this to be able to service it, look how many screws are on the bottom. We have one, two, eight, nine, ten, and then four on each motor. So a total of 26 just on the bottom here. Then you have more on the top. Now, when it comes to taking your props on and off, a regular eight millimeter socket like this would do just fine. So why don't a lot of us wrench on our quads just like that, the same way that we would on a car? I was holding the quad in front of camera with the props backwards. Why your camera is like this? Because you're too tall. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to bend as well. Like, oh. And that's because not only are you going to be doing this quite often, but because of that and because of the nature of RC, you need to not wear out your hands because you're going to be doing quite a bit of very fine motor control activities using your thumbs. So whether you're a gamer, a piano player, a saxophone player, or a drone racer, you're going to need to save your hands and your wrists. You don't want to be induced in carpal tunnel by doing this repetitive motion 15,000 times in 20 minutes. That's where something like this is extremely expensive. It is the pinnacle of FPV opulence. It is luxury in a hobby that is already full of quite a few tiny luxuries. But if you want to go big or go home, there is no substitute. That's where these powered options come in for the power options you have these small ones they don't have a lot of power this is the wow stick this one runs on triple a batteries this one has its own internal battery that you charge with usb but it comes with a list of heads that you can use those really don't work for hobby grade so i had to buy this 2.0 separately and as you can see this bad boy is about 75 bucks. It comes with the battery. This is a gyroscopic screwdriver. So it kind of turns automatically when you hit the button. You turn to the right, it turns to the left. It turns to the left, it turns to the left. The Excalibur of FPV tool. This is premium, but it's manual. It's basically a lightsaber for removing fasteners. There's one. There's two. Three. It's almost instantaneous. Okay, now we're going to do the opposite test. How long does it take to put a set of props on here? Now this thing is super powerful. It is an elegant weapon from a more civilized time, but because it is so powerful, you have to really be careful with how you hold your prop. Normally when I was doing a thing by hand, I don't mind what you normally would do. I would hold it like this with my thumb kind of uh, keeping this part of the prop steady. This will totally spin this so hard that it will just cut right through your thumb. Um, that's from what happened to my thumb the other day. So when you do this, you wanna be very careful not to crank it down all the way. As soon as you feel it touch this prop, you wanna let go and turn the rest manually. So here we go. Feeling it touch the prop, 
So for the last couple ones, I'm gonna do it manually with my finger off of the button. Ooh, see, that was close. Got a real, like, I'm not paying as careful attention because I'm on video right now. So be very careful when you're doing this with this tool. Soon as you start to feel a little bit of prop, you go ahead and do the last few turns by hand so that you don't cut a piece of your finger off. Yeah, new tech does not fuck around. <laughs> Conversely, if you need to apply a good bit of torque, having a really nice hobby driver like these MIP drivers that come conveniently in one and a half, two and a half, and 2.0 sizes, all the sizes we need for RC are gonna save you a lot of time and money and mental anguish in the long run. What kind of tools do you use? Are you the kind that cheaps out? Are you the kind that just has someone else build all your quads for you? That's also an option too. But until the price pools get bigger until the YouTube channels grow stronger. Not all of us can afford our own pit crew the way that a Formula One or NASCAR team would do. And being that we're gonna have to wrench on our own stuff, I wanna be able to save my fingers all the aches and pains that they might have over time for wearing out getting stick time, not fix time. Thanks guys.